Hello, and welcome to all of you watching today. We are very pleased and really excited to be part of Arden University's Student Committee for Brain Awareness Week 2022, and especially excited to be presenting a book to you, the younger people in the audience, entitled The Brain is Kind of a Big Deal by American author and cartoonist Nick Selleck. Now, neuroscientists are very clever people and are interested in learn learning as much as possible about our brains. Sometimes the information and the words they use can be a little bit overwhelming and a little bit confusing, but inside this book, Nick Selleck presents fascinating scientific facts and amazing information about your brain using easy to follow cartoon pictures and entertaining characters. We think you will love listening to the book and following along with the pictures with us together and learning a few more things about what your brain can do for you. Be prepared to be amazed. After we've looked at the book together, we have some super interesting information from the author himself, Nick Selleck, who very kindly answered some of our own questions about his interest in our brains and why he believes this is so important to pass on to you, the scientists of the future. If you would like to find out more about Nick Selleck and his funny cartoons and brilliant books, please take a look at his website, theawkwardyeti.com. So, sit back, get comfortable and enjoy The Brain is Kind of a Big Deal by Nick Selleck. Inside of your head, behind your eyes, and under your hair is one of the coolest things about you, your brain. Your brain is the command centre of your entire body, a living computer. It's constantly collecting and storing new information about everything you experience. That way, the next time you experience the same thing, your brain will know exactly what to do. Without your brain, you wouldn't be able to read and understand these words or even turn the page of a book. Sure, for you, turning the page seemed easy, but your brain had to move a lot of different muscles in just the right way to make that happen. Your brain works really hard all the time without you even knowing it. Within your brain are five sections called lobes. Each lobe does something a little different, but the parts all work together too. And here are the five parts of your brain. The brain is made up of billions of things called neurons. They talk to one another by sending messages through gaps called synapses. And when your brain's neurons work together to help your body take action, you can do all kinds of complicated things. Once a message leaves the brain, it travels through long stringy nerves. Nerves are like roads. They connect the brain to everything else in the body. Your brain tells you when you need to eat. Your stomach and gut send messages to your brain and your brain decides when you're hungry or full. Are you tired right now? If you are, your brain is getting messages from your body that you need to sleep soon. And when you sleep, your brain and body get a lot of much needed rest. And while you dream, your brain gets ready for the next day. Sometimes it dreams about really weird stuff. Now, it's time to move on to even more fun stuff, the stuff that makes you, you. Your brain helps you turn thoughts into words so you can say or write what you're thinking. And when you talk and write in a way that other people understand, you're using language. Your brain is also in charge of telling your muscles and body exactly how to move. When you run, your brain gives your body very specific instructions. When you're in danger, your brain is firing messages all throughout your nervous system to make movements happen. By now, you know that your brain is always collecting information like a computer. All that information is stored in your memory. Your brain searches through all that information so you can find a memory when you need it. A new memory is kept by your brain for about 30 seconds before it's forgotten. This is called your short-term memory. If you repeat something enough times, or if it's really important, that short-term memory can turn into long-term memory. Long-term memories last, you guessed it, 
a really long time. And don't worry, your brain will never stop making new memories, so keep learning. Something the brain is really, really good at is thinking. Thinking and thinking and thinking. Your brain is thinking about things pretty much all the time. You can imagine things and solve problems just by thinking about them. Every invention that people ever created, from rockets and medicines to toilets and pizza, come from thinking about ways to make things better. And did you know your feelings, like love, come from your brain too? You feel happy, sad, angry or scared without ever having to learn how. You can control how you react when you feel something, but your feelings happen no matter what. Your brain is pretty important. It helps you make sense of the world around you. It tells your heart to pump blood to the rest of your body and your lungs to breathe so they can stay alive. It moves your body and helps you talk, see and hear. Your brain is in charge of all the thoughts and feelings and memories that make you, you. And that's kind of a big deal. And there you have it. We really hope you enjoyed the book as much as we did, and we've really enjoyed taking part in Brain Awareness Week. In fact, so much so, we decided to make our own brain like the one we saw in the book. Would you like to make your own too? If so, go back to the page in the book which has the brain and the lobes on. Can you see the lobes? See the outline? You could be as creative as you like. You could use modeling clay, building bricks, junk modeling you find in the kitchen. If you do this when you're done, please make sure to send us pictures of what you've made. You can see the details on the screen now and we will share your creations on our Twitter account. What inspired you to write this book about the brain? The brain is so complex that we don't fully understand it. When a subject is difficult to understand, I enjoy the challenge of finding ways to communicate about it that people can understand and learn from easily. It's a subject that has always really interested me and I wanted to share that with the kids. How important do you think it is for children to know about the brain from a young age and why? Learning about the brain can be helpful to be a starting point to understand how differently people think which can be helpful when learning concepts like empathy. An awareness of how the brain works can also help children be more aware of their own thoughts and actions, which of those might be appropriate or not, and help them better identify thoughts and feelings and acknowledge their own mental health. Many people grow up without this awareness and downplay the importance of brain health as a result. How would you suggest grown-ups try to inspire the younger generation to develop an interest for neuroscience? Grown-ups can share fascinating facts about the brain, there are a lot, and even ideas that haven't been developed yet. For example, in science fiction, we often have ideas for things like biotech that years later come to fruition in some form. Kids should be encouraged to dream things up in much the same way, suggesting the impossible and being told I don't know, maybe you will invent or discover that one day.